Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Recently said on Twitter that it feels like it's really hard to go to Home Depot without coming away with another idea for a video. And the product I was thinking of when I said that is this item right here. So this is the Rekia lock and you can see it comes with some tools as well as some pins and some pre-cut keys. Now to explain how this works, I'm gonna bring up some diagrams here. This diagram right here is what the inside of a lock looks like. This is what the inside of your home deadbolt looks like. And you can see how those red pins are a bunch of different heights. And then those blue pins block that line. That's what actually keeps the lock from turning when you put in no key or the wrong key. And so this is effectively a mechanical combination lock. Each of those pins is cut to a particular height, which basically corresponds to a number. And when you put in the correct key, it looks like this. And you can see how the tops of those red, uh, red pins are all lined up. And so that sort of line is the shear line. And when everything's lined up like that, then it can turn nicely and you can open your lock. So what this little set uh, contains, this little kit, is it contains a bunch of pins with which are color coded and those pre-cut keys. And so inside those directions, I didn't actually buy one and I'll explain why, but inside those directions will tell you how to match uh, the pins up to the to get it to the right pattern for the keys that are already cut. This basically lets you uh, re-key your own home locks without needing to involve a locksmith. Now, before I go any further and talk about how this product is runs or has some legal problems associated with it, I also just want to say this is a good product. This is actually a really useful thing. This is something that allows um, an owner of a property to do something that might have otherwise cost them a lot of money uh, fairly inexpensively as a do-it-yourself project. This is not something that has uh, like any criminal application. You're not gonna be able to use this to break into anything because you have to actually already be inside and already be able to disassemble the lock. If you can disassemble the lock, you're already able to get into that into the door, right? So there's no criminal application to this. There's no nefarious purpose. This is just a, a product to make people's lives easier. So, the problem that we're going to run into here is with a, a bit of legislation here in Alberta and different provinces of different legislation. This just applies to Alberta where I live. And so this is the Security Services and Investigators Act. And if we look here, there's a section here that talks about locksmiths and bypass tools. This is the, the provision that's going to cause us some problems. It says no person may, without a license to do so, and we're gonna skip over to the bits we care about. And this is one of the key bits, possess locksmith tools. Now, if you know me, I whenever we see a term that you know is unclear, I always want to go and look at the definition section, but the definition section doesn't actually define what a locksmith tool is. So this is a bit of a problem for us. What does that mean? Um, it's unclear. They, it's not, they didn't specify what they were talking about. Now, when we actually look at the, uh, what's in the kit, we can see that there's some specialty tweezers. Now, I don't know if those things have any other application, but the thing that might be a really big problem is the plug follower. What that's for is you remember those red pins and blue pins? Well, if you just pull out the, uh, the plug on itself, the blue pins can fall out and can make a, uh, this can be a big hassle for you. You don't want that. So this is a tool that basically pushes in with, to remove the lock plug so that you don't have this hassle, this pain to put everything back together. It's a really useful tool. It's a very convenient tool for this purpose, but I don't think it has any other application. It's a very specialized tool that's normally only used by locksmiths. I mean, locksmiths use lots of tools. There's various things that they might work with, um, needle files, pliers, you know, all sorts of things. But I feel that a court is probably going to be likely to think that something is a locksmith tool if it's specifically something that is a tool normally only used by locksmiths. 
Now, locksmiths themselves might be perfectly happy with this outcome, because if you see on the packaging here, it says, no locksmith needed. And normally locksmiths charge a fair chunk of money for showing up at your door to perform this task, but it's not a difficult task so long as you've got the bits to do it. Now, I didn't buy one of these things, notwithstanding the fact that they are for sale uh, fairly easily at Home Depot there, because of this provision. And when we look at the penalties for this, the penalties are actually um, pretty steep. So let's just pull that up here so we can see. So penalties. A person who is guilty of an offense is liable in the case of an individual to a fine of not more than $5,000 or to a term of imprisonment not exceeding one year, or to both a fine and imprisonment. I don't have a year to kill, and I don't have five grand to spend on on defending this or on paying a fine for this, so I don't really feel too inclined to mess around with it. This particular uh, bit of legislation also has an interesting element in that there's some exceptions, and one of them is really interesting because it is a... Uh, an interesting legal problem. And if you've been watching this channel, you know my saying is that interesting means expensive. But this one, I just want to point out because it might apply to me. I think it does. However, um, it's unclear. It's unclear. And while I think it does, I'm pretty sure it probably does. I can't say for certain uh, whether or not I can't say for certain. And I don't want to get locked into a court uh, proceeding over it. But the provision I'm talking about here is this one here, and I'll just switch it over again. Uh, barristers and solicitors acting within the scope of their profession. So if I'm acting within the scope of being a lawyer in buying one of these things, then it would be legal for me to have one. And the question then would be, is making these videos and educating the public on the law is that within the scope of being a lawyer? Is, you know, am I doing lawyer things when I make these videos? I kind of think yes, but I don't want to gamble with it with the courts. Um, I don't like the Security Services and Investigators Act. I think it is, I think that large portions of it are bad legislation. Um, I'll probably have some other videos talking about some other bits of it. Um, there are lots of parts of this that I just don't like and that I think should be changed. Um, so I, perhaps in another video, I'll talk about why this exists, but anyway, this is a great product. It's a perfectly reasonable thing for them to sell. It's a really, um, potentially useful thing that unfortunately our laws say they probably, that you probably can't buy. Anyway, um, <laughs> some people have said in the past that I uh, that my videos often contain bad news, and I guess this is one of those. So this is kind of a rant. Um, it's kind of a, an expressing frustration with this. Um, I don't think these things should be illegal in any way, but they they create a legal hazard for a person who buys one. Uh, it's overall, it might be a better idea just to hire the locksmith as much as I hate to say it, because I'm a big proponent of people being able to do things themselves where they can. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope that this has been interesting or educational. Um, I know this is a bit of a weird one, but hey, uh, I like to mix things up a little bit. I've got some cases I want to talk about. There's a bunch of other things that I've sort of got on the go. I just got to sit down and record them. Anyway, Thank you for watching. I want to thank my Patreon supporters as well. There's a link to the Patreon in the description below if you want to check it out. Um, at the $50 level, Canada's National Farms Association, the CCFR, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Sites and Arms Limited. And at the $20 level, Mark, Jane Babe, and Luxor, Haywire, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, Bruno R., Andrew Elsich, and Vicky. Thank you as well to the $10 supporters who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching, and I hope this has armed you with knowledge. I also, I'm not sure if I mentioned, uh, those images of the lock are via uh, Tool, that's with three O's, 
as well as Deviant Olaf. That's Deviant and then O L L A M. He's got a YouTube channel of his own. Check it out. Um, it is full of amazingly good content on locks and security devices. Um, I really can't recommend it enough. It's one of those channels I watch to learn a whole bunch of interesting new things. So check that out. And I'm giving him a thank you here for very graciously allowing me to use those images because they're very uh, useful for illustrating this point. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you next time. Cheers.